Hello and welcome to Astronomy Spotlight. My name is Kirk Rosberg. I'm the Planetarium Coordinator here at the Hastings Museum. And this month on Astronomy Spotlight, the Moon and the Bright Stars of the Zodiac. The path that the Sun, Moon, and five visible planets appear to move along is called the ecliptic. And there is the ecliptic line right there in red. Um, it is also where you will find the 12 constellations of the zodiac. The moon will be crossing some of the zodiacal constellations this month, and some of these happen to have bright stars. So if you want to learn where some of those major constellations are in the sky, you can use the moon as a guide. On May 12th, the crescent moon is near the bright star Pollux in Gemini. Let me turn on the lines for Gemini. There they are. And here is Pollux. So late on the 13th, the moon is in very faint Cancer, which actually has no bright stars. But at least you can see where Cancer is located. Uh, here are the stars of Cancer connected with lines. Even the lines are fairly faint. But at least, you know, you can see that Cancer kind of looks like uh, a very faint upside down Y. On the 15th, the first quarter moon is actually near the bright star Regulus in Leo the Lion. The head of Leo kind of looks like a backwards question mark with Regulus as the point of the backward question mark. Uh, here are the lines for Leo, right there. And here is Regulus. On the 19th and 20th, the nearly full moon is near Spica, the brightest star in the large constellation of Virgo, the Maiden. And here are the lines for Virgo. And Spica is right there. It is by far the brightest star in, in Virgo. Spica means ear of wheat, because she is supposed to be holding an ear of wheat in her hand. On the 21st of May, the moon is in Libra, the scales, just below the star Zubin el Janubi. Here are the lines for Libra the scales, which is qu quite an unbalanced uh, set of scales. And here is Zubin al Janubi, right above the nearly full moon. When I put up the lines for both Libra and Scorpius, you can see how it looks like the scorpion sort of has long claws. So let me add Scorpius up there. And you can see, kind of coming from the, the three bright stars in front of, of Scorpius, uh, it kind of looks like two claws extending out. Because uh, at one time, the claws were quite a bit longer than they are now. The Romans actually thought the claws were, were really too long and actually made them much shorter uh, with, the, with the addition of the final 12th constellation of the zodiac, Libra the Scales. Now we've advanced to the 23rd of May, late on the 23rd. The full moon is actually right below the bright red supergiant star Antares, the heart of Scorpius. And let me turn on the lines for the scorpion one more time. Uh, in fact, I'll even turn on the art. There we go. The scorpion, when it's fully visible, actually looks something like a, a, a giant hook in the sky. And finally, on the 26th, uh, at around midnight, the waning crescent moon is near the center of Sagittarius, the, the Sagittarius asterism, uh, known by many as the teapot. And you can, I think you should be able to clearly see that it looks like a teapot, although some people uh, actually, I have a very hard time seeing the teapot, uh, but it is there. 
as you can see, the brightest stars of the Archer do look like a teapot. Thank you for watching. Come back again next month for another edition of Astronomy Spotlight. And thank you for watching.